equals to be alone. Where you won't see any rising sun. Down to the river we will run. When by the water we drink to the dregs. Look at the stones on the river bed. I can tell from your eyes you never been by the Cause you somebody says Swim with the current and float away Down by the river every day Oh my God I see how everything is torn In the river deep And I don't know why I go the way Timothy James Vanson, not Vincent. I was born March 14, 1952, in the Old Palms Hospital in Abbeville, Louisiana. I live on the headquarters of the Paul J. Rainey Wildlife Sanctuary uh, out in the coastal marsh of Vermillion Parish. Uh, the headquarters is accessible only by boat. No, no vehicles can get here, and uh, I've been here for 16 years. I was born in Abbeville, grew up in a small community called Erath, which is just six miles east of Abbeville. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the outdoor part of my life was, was there from the beginning. We, um, my paternal grandparents had a, had a farm, and uh, so we were, we were exposed to farming practices then, and um, farming, and they raised cattle. And my uh, my maternal grandparents had a um, small business of a furniture store, so I had I had exposure to both both worlds when I was when I was growing up. But the the both part we were we we spent a lot of time um, on the water and in the field. So those those skills came naturally. Three of my grandparents were Acadians, mm -hmm. and Acadians came here in um, 1775, before the American Revolution. And my, um, my, mat my maternal grandmother family came here directly from France after that. So we've been in Louisiana for a very long time. I'm a sanctuary manager, wildlife sanctuary manager for the National Autumn Society. And my work responsibilities is managing um, 26,000 acres of coastal wetlands in uh, southern Vermillion Parish. Have you always um, been interested in the wetlands and wanted to work doing something like that? All my life, yes. I think my grandparents' farm was was one of my special favorite places. We uh, it was a working farm, and every day, every morning, you were out before daylight and doing chores. 
and um, Saturdays you, we would we had, we would bring uh, corn, uh, unprocessed whole corn, which was dry, put it in sacks, bring it to a mill and grind it up. And while we were in town, we always got treats, so that was a fun thing. And uh, he also had um, had cotton fields that were picked by hand, and bringing the cotton into the to the gin and having it. Um, uh, delivered and weighed, and then that was another special thing to do. And of course, uh, most special of all was any time we went to the marsh. That was that was fun. We would crab, and we would fish, and we would swim, and we would eat, and relax, and eat some more and relax more. <laughs> That's what we did. <laughs> Does that marsh where you used to play around there still exist? Is yes, that that still exists, and. Um, and, and I, it was in a time when things were simple. It wasn't um, 40 mile an hour speed boats. It was it was it was it was boats that were took a big load and brought everybody out. And while you were there, you you did p rolls that you went swimming and you did those kind of things. It was a very simple life back then. I think most of my of the people that I know, their parents did something in the marshes to put food on the table. Not not as a as a living, but we did feed ourselves off of off of the bounty of the land. Well, I think my favorite place now is is here on on the sanctuary. It's um it's 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 huge and it's um it's 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 not a simple place. It's a complex place. But once you once you get into the rhythm of it, it's uh, it is it's a lot of fun to see um, things change and things happen. Mm -hmm. What kind of things change and happen? You go from from um, from a really salty regime, and if you get a rainfall and no storms, then you go to more a fresher regime, and it, and, the, and the place changes with with those regimes. It, it becomes, it'll, it'll go from very productive to hardly productive to back to very productive again when, when those processes happen. Is saltier generally better or, or fresh? Um, or here, here fresher is better. You, you, you never get 100% fresh. It's just slightly brackish. But those, in those conditions, this place flourishes. Very high salinities. It it, um, it 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 is hurting. Can you tell me some of the ways the wetlands or the environment in general have, has changed since you were little? Has it changed? Have you noticed? Oh, certainly. Um, we have we have channelized the coast of our part of the coast, and I cannot speak for any other part of Louisiana, but our coast. Uh, we have put navigational channels in that have completely changed the hydrology, and it and it has allowed um, saltwater intrusion and tidal flux to get into the interior marsh where it never was before. So we we went from a very um, solid base in our marsh to now where it's very fragmented and it's and it's going to open water. Even the interior is going to open water. And it's, it's, it's evident when you look at land loss maps since um, 1969, when freshwater bio was, was, was installed to today, it has accelerated tremendously, our marsh loss has accelerated tremendously. Louisiana coastal wetlands produce a huge amount of biomass, plant and animal material. There's only one there's only one environment in the world that produces more, and it's the cane fields of Hawaii. Because they can grow two crops of sugar cane a year, so the the plant material in there, the weight of that plant material outweighs what one acre of marsh produces here, but but it's it's an artificial environment because they plant they fertilize. They, in the natural world, the Louisiana wetlands are the most productive system in the world. The Amazon is—I mean, you see a lot of biodiversity there, 
but if you cut the trees down, you can't even you can grow crops for three or four years and it, it, it loses its its fertility. I don't care where you go. This this environment is the most for total biomass, plant and animal material, in the world. Forty percent of all the seafood in the United States spends part of its life to cycle in Louisiana coastal wetlands. Just the tonnage of, of that seafood is tremendous. Mm. And you can you can burn these marshes in the fall, and the next year you have it's you have more. You have more um, plants in that in that area than you had before you burn it. It's very productive. It's a very productive system. Where's the coastline now compared to what to where it was maybe 40 years ago? Coastline. Um, I think um, our coastline along the Gulf here is probably 10 foot a year so, um, that we lose. Um, some places, um, the average is probably 10 foot because the area around Southwest Pass where the, there's no beachhead left, uh, and in Chinyatig where they have a uh, beachhead, that is slower at Chinyatig than it is around the pass because there's nothing to hold a marsh around the pass. Mm -hmm. There's no beachhead. And have you noticed that loss yourself? Oh yes, oh yes. You can, um, I can, I can go and show you where they had uh, a camp, and now the pilings that a camp are on are on the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, you can you can visually see it. There are oak trees that were that were alive just a few years ago. They're now just a, a skeleton on right on the edge of salt water that's getting ready to fall in. I mean, yeah, you can see it. What do you see in the future of the Louisiana wetlands and the communities along the coast and that kind of thing? Well, I've, I've seen uh, what happened after Hurricane Rita and Ike to all communities along the coast here. Went from thriving communities to, uh, I was a little bit young, when Audrey hit, Hurricane Audrey, which was the, the worst one before that. But um, I, I see um, the communities are going to struggle. And if we can go through a period of 40 or 50 years with no major storms, uh, some of those communities may rebuild slightly, but I don't think they will ever be like they were because of government regulations. You, it, you have to do certain, you have to build a certain height, you have to get a certain type of insurance and it's just not worth it anymore. So I think some of the communities will, will some of them may come back a bit because of the fishing and the industry, but they will never be thriving communities like they were before. So what advice would you give to a young resident growing up along the coast of Louisiana in the marshes? Someone, someone with a background like you that's, that wants to make a living here? It's, it's extremely hard if, you're not, if you don't have the resources, if your family does not own property or you it's extremely hard to get established on coastal Louisiana because of the cost, but it can be done. Um, but you have to want it. You have to want to do it. And and, and as in the French language, um, most of the marsh culture is lost. The trapping is lost. That culture is lost. Shrimping is in tr big trouble. And they're importing shrimp from Brazil and, and everywhere else, so the, the, their prices are, are depressed. Um, so you have a few things that you can make a living off of in coastal Louisiana, but not many. Is it? Those opportunities are dwindling rapidly. You know, it's there are no more opportunities. It's just too expensive to live here. Cool.
discret. 